Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the session on Indian Sign Language Recognition. Today, we have with us Mr. Akshay Bahadur. He is a software engineer at Semantic Softwares. We will be beginning the session in a few minutes. As a quick reminder, a brief survey will follow the end of the session. And we would like you to share your best moments at the virtual conference on your social media handles, Facebook and Twitter. You can use the hashtag ODSC APAC. The, uh, the post with the highest number of likes and shares will win the all access pass to ODSC East Virtual Conference. All of your feedback will help us to shape the future conference. So please do provide your feedback. Now, please join me in welcoming Mr. Akshay Bahadur. We will now begin the session. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, guys, uh, for the lovely introduction. Uh, so tonight, we'll be discussing about uh, my project that I did. Uh, it's called as SLR, or Indian Sign Language Recognition. Um, so uh, before we start, uh, we follow a very simple agenda. So uh, I'll quickly explain the project, the problem statements, and how I, what exactly I did. Uh, apart from that, I'll also show you uh, how other communities uh, have helped me into developing this project. And then finally, uh, we'll have some Q&A. Uh, we'll not go into a lot of technical details at this point, uh, but I will be more than happy to uh, address any questions that you have uh, at the end of the session. So uh, before further ado, let's start. Uh, so this is me, Akshay Bahadur. You can find me on Twitter at Akshay Bahadur 3 or you can even contact me on my website, akshabahadur.com. And if you have any questions or if you have any collaboration opportunities, I'll be more than happy to answer those. Uh, so first of all, a bit about myself. Um, I recently joined a new company called Lowe's. I was working as a senior data scientist there. Uh, I'm also a Google developer expert in machine learning, which means I get to work very closely with the TensorFlow ecosystem people and other experts in this field of machine learning. Um, I've also received the most influential young data scientist award for the year 2019. And this is for, the, for my contributions in the field of machine learning and open source. Uh, I've also been awarded by top into Intel Innovator Award uh, in 2019. Uh, I've been invited for more than 50 plus sessions and keynotes on machine learning in India as well as inter internationally. And just fun fact, this is my third ODAC India conference. So I was present in the first one, uh, the second one, and this one as well. So uh, this is a very special opportunity for me because I started my whole uh, giving uh, talks uh, with ODAC. Uh, so this is a, a, a Kind of a full circle for me. Uh, so these are some of the snippets. So uh, I've been uh, all over the world, uh, back to my school. Uh, you can see this old ODS 2018 when I went there and I presented my work. Uh, so I can assure that you are in good hands. Um, having said that, uh, let's quickly start. Let's jump on to uh, uh, some of the important links. Uh, so before we actually get in, into the cracks, I would want to share one important link. So if you want to follow along, um, just go to bit.ly slash ODSC hyphen 20, uh, and you will be redirected to uh, my GitHub page or my GitHub repository, which contains the links uh, uh, as well as all the resources that I've used in this talk. So if you feel like that you, uh, you know, want to go back home and do more research, this is the link. Uh, you will find the slides, you'll find all the resources and you, may, you can even contact me on GitHub by raising an issue. Uh, so with that in mind, let's quickly start. So let's talk about Islar, uh, why exactly I came up with this and uh, what what does it try to solve? Okay, so first of all, we look at the definition. So the, the project aims to demonstrate uh, the use of machine learning uh, to develop and standardize an Indian sign language recognition system. So these two terms are very important for us, develop and standardize, and we'll discuss these two terms in details uh, why have I emphasized on the words developing and standardization? So developing uh, makes it pretty straightforward. You want to make sure that uh, the sign language system uh, that you have developed uh, is, is uh, uses machine learning so that um, it, it it can be used by uh, you know a variety of people. Standardization is also very important, and we'll discuss this uh, a bit detail uh, later on as we as you go forward. So just keep those two terms in mind, and we'll keep coming back. Uh, to this for the next 15 20 minutes um, so yeah so let's move forward now let's talk about the problem statement uh, so the problem statement 
uh, it's pretty uh, so basically as when we then we define a problem statement we want to make sure that uh, the solution that we are proposing um, is is redundant uh, uh, sorry it's, it's robust which means that it can solve multi is it can uh, withstand multiple issues at the same time it should be pervasive that is it, it should uh, incorporate as many people as it could so uh, so 40 million people are the number of people uh, in india that currently have speech and hearing impairment uh, and around 80 kilometers or which is around 45 miles uh, it's a distance between two places uh, where i stay and where i work that's that is mumbai and pune um, and within these two cities that are very close by the sign languages uh, the sign language uh, for india becomes sign languages uh, so so what I want to emphasize on is the fact that the sign language system in India is not standardized, uh, which means that uh, different places will have different regional languages and regional languages will have their own sign, uh, which can be very minutely different or they can be entirely different as well. So uh, within Mumbai and Pune, we had minute changes. Uh, so the, my second term that I showed you in the, in the definition was to standardize. And this is, uh, a very important aspect that you want to make sure that uh, Indian Sign Language is is uh, standardized throughout India, and that is something that uh, that should be done on an uh, institutional level. So now let's look at the ideal solution. So if I wanted to solve this problem ideally, how how would I want to solve it? So certain key features first, as already mentioned, is I want to standardize ISL like American Sign Language. So American Sign Language is is standard throughout the US, and it can be used as a benchmark for for india so that the sign language in india could also uh, be uniform now second thing is that uh, leveraging ai uh, so that you can account for the minute changes in signs and symbols so there are two changes in sign language that i have noticed first is there a minor which means that uh, for a certain sign uh, gesture uh, the gesture could be uh, not an exact copy uh, of the sign language or gesture that is given in the books or the textbooks. that uh, everywhere in india so these are three aspects that i uh, that i want that i went ahead with of course there can be many more but these three were the most important that i figured out uh, that were most important to me so now the methodology uh, so so for ISL inter interpretation uh, what i realized is that you need to broadly define it into three terms so first is hand movement. So how we talk, uh, as in let's say, even when we are speaking, my hand gestures are conveying an important aspect to you. Uh, and this forms a part of conversation. Uh, in ISL as well, like hand movements uh, play a very important role. So this is the first thing that you would want to tackle. Second is something that I also realize is called facial expressions. So how you move your facial features also play an important role uh, when you're talking about sign language. And third, the pose estimation, that is how the person is standing, will definitely play an important role. Uh, so uh, with the current implementation that I have, I have taken into account the first and the two, uh, the first two aspects. The third aspect is still something that I'm working on. Uh, but once we have all of the, that, we can specify, we can say that our, our sign language, uh, our, 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 our application is complete. So now we'll talk about the development process. Uh, so uh, the development process, uh, I thought would be very simple, but it turns on that it is not that simple. So I went ahead. Um, so what I thought that I'll go to an NGO, uh, I'll figure, figure the problems out and I will create a sign language system in let the, let's say two or three months. Uh, but uh, when I started going to an NGO, I realized that there are a lot of problems that are, uh, that, that are hidden and that are not shown on the surface. So I spent around six months learning sign language. So I went to an NGO near my place in Pune, uh, and I spent six months interacting with the kids learning sign language. So this was my initial phase. So you can see this video. I um, I went to this uh, this NGO, and these are some of the students from those NGO, and they are currently 
uh, signing for different alphabets. So this is currently muted for now. Uh, but if you want to have a look, look at that, you can go to this slide and you can uh, you can go to the slides using the link that I mentioned, bit.ly slash ODSC hyphen committee. And you can find the whole video on my YouTube channel as well. Uh, it's around five to six minutes of video uh, where these students are signing me, signing for different languages, for different gestures. So basically I use this as sort of a ground truth for me and uh, how exactly would I want to develop my system so that people can, uh, can help. Uh, all right. So, uh, so then I uh, developed or then I uh, sort of divided my work into different phases. So the first phase or the zeroth phase was just working with hand gestures. So, and I also wanted not want to work on the entire hand uh, images. I wanted to work on just a skeleton image so that uh, my, uh, as in the resource intensity will be minimum uh, because I filtered out all the background noise and I'm just working on my hand skeletons. So this is how it would look like. So these are different uh, signs for different uh, numbers. And as you can see that we only need one hand gesture, like just one hand, right or left. Then I also realized that we can use multiple, I mean, we can use two of our hands and this will be used for signing for different alphabets. So A is this, uh, B is this, and so on, so on and so forth. We have X like this. So then uh, from one hand, we move to two hands and we are not working on the entire image. We're only working on uh, a skeleton image which is filtered out uh, for just our uh, hands and uh, nothing else. So all the background is removed. Now, yep, so this is the entire video. So uh, you can see um, that I've played the video and uh, based on my hand gestures, uh, uh, my, my machine learning model is predicting different alphabets or letters uh, or numbers. So on the right, you can see the, the filtered out image. So I'm only working with uh, with the hand gestures uh, and not the entire image. So this makes my uh, model more robust. This makes my model, uh, uh, I don't need any internet connections. I can directly uh, deploy it on mobile phones um, and it could be used by a wider audience. Then I realized that uh, just the hand gestures are good, but if I want to uh, talk to more people or if I want to make this uh, uh, a better application, I have to take into account the facial features as well. So then I developed my own facial key point tracker, uh, um, uh, collected my own data set. Uh, you can also find the data set on the internet. And as you can see, then I used just my hand gestures and my, my facial key points and nothing else from the entire image, just so that uh, I could uh, account for uh, more gestures. So this is a small snippet of it. So, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so now you can see that um, this gesture is is for man. Uh, this is uh, for Lord Ganesh, uh, which is in the Hindu, Hindu Hindu God. This is for studying and so on and so forth. So I have accounted for uh, for at least twenty to twenty five different gestures uh, using just uh, my facial expressions as well as my hand gestures. And this makes my model more robust. It makes um, uh, the whole application appeal to a wide wider audience. So so this was uh, this was like an initial point for me where I thought that oh, okay this looks pretty interesting. Then I in integrated uh, uh, text to speech as well. So as you can see, for each gesture, uh, for each gesture, uh, we have the voice as well, and at the same time we also have. Uh, a visual feedback. So whichever works for the audience, uh, you have both the flavors. Uh, so of course, you can have a full look at the video through my slides. I'm going to go ahead uh, with the next slides because in the interest of the time. Uh, okay, now, so a good thing that happened with, with, with this project is that uh, I got a chance to go to Google headquarters in California and I got a chance to display this project directly to, to the TensorFlow team. And they were more than happy to accept my views and accept my implementation. At the same time, they provided me multiple uh, changes that I could do in my project just so that I could appeal to a wider audience. So the, here's a small snippet from it. Uh, and if you want to have a look at the entire video, you can definitely have a look uh, on my YouTube channel.
So just a very small snippet of, from the entire uh, presentation, but if you want to have a look at that, you're more than welcome to uh, have a look on my YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> So with that said, um, we are almost coming to the end. I think we have around four to five minutes left. Uh, so another good thing that happened was uh, the Google folks like my work uh, quite a lot and they thought that this would solve issues in India. So I decided to do a, a video series on me uh, and my work. So the next video is a small snippet of, of, um, of the journey, uh, but I have only uh, you know talk about only the part which is interesting and i think that this could be helpful for for you guys if you have more uh, you know if you have a project in mind and if you feel that it could be helpful for the community they want to make sure that uh, you guys follow that because uh, once you once you're doing something which is interesting which could be helpful a lot of people will come to help you and you will definitely uh, get a lot of help from the community so enjoy the next video. Uh, it's around uh, it's, it's three minutes long, but I have only selected around 20 seconds of it. And you can have an entire look at the video um, from my YouTube channel. Uh, so you can have a look at the entire video. It's on three minutes. It's uh, starts from how I started and then uh, my journey on to building the sign language system. Uh, so feel free to have a look at that. Uh, so with that, I would like to end my session. Uh, uh, if you have any questions for me, feel free to reach out right now or you can even do it afterwards. Um, and also if you have any feedback for me, I'll be more than happy to incorporate that. Uh, you can go to akshabhavu.com. You can leave them in the chat or you can email me as well uh, you will find all the links on akshabhadal.com um, so this is it from my end uh, this my name is akshabhadal you can find me on twitter at akshabhadal.com my personal website is akshabhadal uh, sorry you can find me at twitter at akshabhadal3 my personal website is akshabhadal.com and if you want to have a look, look at all the links or the presentation go to bit.ly slash odsc hyphen 20 and you will be redirected to my github page which contains the slides and the links for all the resources that i have used uh, for this session uh, so with that i think i am done we still have uh, three minutes left uh, two minutes left uh, let me know if you have any questions i'm going to stop sharing my screen now uh, and let me know if you have any questions for me All uh, right, I think that looks that like I don't have any questions. Uh, sounds great. Uh, but once again, if, if you have any question for me, you can reach out to me on uh, on my on my website or on on GitHub or on Twitter. Um, so yeah, so with that, I would like to pass over the controls to Shubham. Uh, Shubham, are you still there? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Akshay. Thank you for such a great talk. And um, thank you everyone for joining us. Also, please do fill the survey that will be following up on the Slack channel. Thank you again. All right. Thank you so much, guys. See you. Yeah. Take care.